Hi, welcome back to BusyBots. Well, you're probably used to seeing me sit next to a MakerBot replicator talking about the uh, software and the hardware for MakerBot. And, and I want to show you something new this time, something different. Uh, this, this is a uh, Mendel Max RepRap 3D printer. And I say RepRap because the MakerBot replicator is not really a RepRap in that uh, one of the defining aspects of a RepRap is that it can print some of its own parts and uh, replicator is made out of uh, laser cut plywood and some uh, in injected molded plastic parts so there's no uh, 3D printed parts on a replicator but the Metal Max uh, all these black plastic parts that you see in the corners uh, including the ext it's a green extruder body that I'll show you um, all the bracketry is built uh, f on another rep wrap and so uh, this is a rep wrap and uh, it took me about a couple of months to build it and uh, compile the firmware, do a lot of calibration, still doing a lot of calibration. And I've had some people ask me, well, what's the major difference between a, uh, a Mendel Max or a RepRap versus the, the uh, MakerBot? Well, without getting into too much details, uh, which I intend to, I'll start a new, uh, a new playlist for the Mendel Max. The, the major difference is that this is, this is do-it-yourself. This is nuts and bolts, compiling firmware, running lots of calibration, building custom profiles, doing a lot of tests. Uh, I've printed many, many, many calibration cubes. This is just a, a small sample. I, I stopped keeping them after a while because uh, there was just too many of them. So the difference is that if you buy something like a MakerBot or one of the other uh, printers that, sh that ship to you ready to go, uh, I'm not saying that they're perfectly ready to go out of the box. You still, you, you still have to spend some time calibrating and figure, figuring things out. But with the rep wraps, each one that's built is basically unique. And so even if someone uh, gives you your settings or you download their settings from a website or something, it may get you close, but not all the way there. And so that's the major difference is, is on a rep wrap, you need to really understand all the variables and how they work to get the printer printing nicely. And uh, to be honest, I'm still going through that. I've, I've had moments where it printed beautifully and I got really, really nice prints. And then I tried printing something else that had some different requirements. And I started getting all kinds of uh, print quality issues and had to rework my profile. And then I'd go back and print something else and realize, well, I should have saved that other profile because the new profile doesn't work so well with this other type of file. Uh, and I end up with just a, a lot of different profiles. So the, uh, the Printomatic feature of Replicator G, uh, don't discount it. It actually handles a lot of the details for you. And something with a RepRap, uh, I'm using um, Slicer as the slicing engine and Pronterface as the host and Marlin for the firmware. And uh, getting all those things to work exactly the way you wish takes a little bit of, uh, a little bit of time and some know-how. Anyhow, let me show you the Mental Max. I'll sh just show you an overview of how it went together, um, some of the different ways that, that it moves versus the MakerBot. And um, I'll explain uh, the major issue that I'm, I'm I've been having with the Mental Max is the, the heated bed, and uh, Trinity Labs has just released their update to the bed, which is already in the mail to me, so I'm looking forward to that because uh, I'm just a few steps away from having this thing really dialed in and able to crank out parts 24-7, but I'm not quite there yet, so I'm uh, hoping to get there. Uh, one thing that I think I still have to do is, is build an enclosure around this to control the air in the same way that I had to do with the, uh, the MakerBot. A lot easier to do on the MakerBot replicator because it's already rectangular in shape. You just put the sides on here. Uh, the bed actually comes out. You can see, sticks out in the front in the y-axis and goes all the way out in the back. So there's no simple box that you can build because of the uh, angle of the frame and the way things protrude. And you also have the X ends here sticking out. So uh, let me pull the camera off the tripod, give you a little walk around, show you what the Mental Max is all about. Okay, here's the Mental Max. This is the Trinity Labs kit. It's the 1.5 uh, Plus version of the Trinity Labs Mental Max. And let me give you a walk around, show you how it works. There's two motors for the Z axis, one on either side, one here, one there. And that allows this, uh, these rods to move up, and that's how you get the print height. Uh, the x-axis moves along these rods. You can see there's an end stop over here to 
comes in and maybe you can hear it click. So that's the end stop for the X axis. And the X axis moves up on these um, lead screws here. The Y axis, unlike the MakerBot, the Y axis slides forward and back in and out of the printer. So you can see down here the belt for the Y axis. This is how tight I have it. There's a, a tensioner here on the front, and the motor for the Y axis is in the back. And the X axis motor is here on the right hand side. Let's put this light on for you. This is the X axis, and I have a uh, heat sink and fan on there. Found that to be necessary. And the power supply is mounted underneath. This is a, a duct to route the air out. Oh, let's, can we see? Route the air out the side so it doesn't blow up um, onto, the, uh, onto the heated bed and the nozzle, the nozzle's there. And unlike the replicator, I've got a, a cooling fan attached to the printer, which is controlled by the firmware. And all of this is controlled by the RAMPS 1.4 board. I have it all wired up here back in this corner. Probably a little hard to show you. Uh, all the wires come back there. And I just, I had this other fan sitting here on some uh, vice grips right now. This fan cools the Y motor. And I'll also show you there's a, uh, a step-down converter here, which turns, this is a 24-volt power supply. And this turns 24 volts into 12 volts because all the fans and the extruder heater are 12 volts on this printer, but the heated bed is 24 volts. And so the, the major issue that I'm having with the heated bed is basically getting consistent heat across the bed and the way that it's mounted, these uh, four plastic corners. Let's see here. Oh, can't see that too well. There we go. There's four corners, and what happens is the uh, basically the glass warps up and down, pops up and down. Uh, I did implement PID in the RAMPS firmware for temperature control, which really helped that quite a bit. Um, the new updated kit from Trinity Labs has a different leveling mechanism and does away with these corners and uses some clips to hold things down. And uh, hopefully that'll really help out with printing ABS. And let's still turn it on. So here's the switch I have wired right now. Okay, when that comes on, the uh, there's a, a, a cooling fan on the extruder over here. Fan on the x-axis over here. A fan down there cooling the, the Y motor. And also cools the, um, the step down over there. And this fan only comes on as needed, controlled by the firmware set up in Slicer. Before I wrap up this video, I thought I'd show you some of the, some of the successful prints I've had off the Metal Max. I've been printing these Wade's gears, these uh, herringbone or fishbone gears, and they are just beautiful, really coming out very nice. Um, both the, the, the gears, big gear, whoop, <laughs> big gears and the small gears, and also the uh, Wade's extruder body with the idler. There's a lot of different uh, variations of this on Thingiverse, but I selected this one to print. Now I can't use these parts right now. I, I've got the Trinity Labs Micro Extruder, which runs that little teeny geared motor back there. Um, but I'll be using these on another build. And uh, over here I'm printing, these are parts, these are Metal Max parts. These are the lower vertex pieces that go on like that. And I got a little over ambitious, and I tried it's a really large print. This is, is a toilet paper holder, and uh, it came out nice, except it split. I had some um, on which side I had some splitting problems with the ABS. There you go. If I were printing PLA, that wouldn't have happened, but I did it in ABS, and uh, I think that's because I just didn't. You can also see the the warping along that bottom edge. That curve is supposed to be straight, and as a result. This crossbar does not really fit in the spot where it's supposed to be held. 
So, and I think that's due to the lack of an enclosure around the printer. I need to control the air. Anyhow, I just wanted to show you some of the, uh, some of the parts I've been making on there. So, on uh, smaller pieces like this, parts that, that don't get too tall, it's doing a really nice job. Uh, on taller parts like this, uh, or multi-hour prints where um, things start to cool off, I'm still working on refining that. Anyhow, if you have questions about the Mental Max or um, things about rep wraps, please let me know because it really helps me to know what you're interested in, what you like. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And it gives me the feedback that I need to know what kind of uh, videos to make for you. So thanks again for watching. Hope you come back soon. And let me know what you want to find out about the Mental Max or other rep wraps. All right, thanks again. Printing more Mental Max parts. This is the upper lower vertex, basically this piece here, not the lower part, just this upper piece. I'll let you watch the Metal Max in action. You can see the cooling fan is on. Hopefully you can see that the fan is spinning. And you can see the y-axis going back and forth, different from the way the replicator works. Some of this hanging out here is uh, insulating material that I've put underneath the uh, heat spreader to try to even out the heat on the bed. So I'm printing right in the middle. You can see I've just got that print right in the middle. And uh, that's my best spot for printing. Occasionally I can run two or four parts at once depending on how big they are and their shape. But uh, my best bet is to have one right in the middle.